Did we uncover another little nightmare secret? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and we'll be uncovering another little nightmare secret. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! Can't touch the star! No 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 no! Recently, we were treated to new gameplay set in the Candy Factory. Alone and Lo traverse through mirrors, causing a subtle ripple effect as they go. While Lo can slip through the mirrors with ease, they seem to shatter only in Alone's presence. They find themselves in a dark green-tinged area, an eerie blend of the Maw and Pale City. Nearby, an edible treat lies on a bed close to the mirrors, suggesting they're near the factory's heart. A rat scurries by, likely drawn by the sweet aroma, adding to the unsettling atmosphere. This scene echoes the area in the Maw, where Six first woke up in Little Nightmares 1. Crawling deeper into the factory through vents, Alone and Lo witness guests being carried along conveyor belts by hooks, likely on their way to becoming either workers or candy. Their voluptuous forms are reminiscent of the body bags in Little Nightmares 1, which were destined for the chef's chopping block. As they navigate further, Alone uses her wrench to activate a platform helping them across. Her wrench is invaluable, useful for close-range puzzles and even combat while Lo's bow comes in handy for dealing with long-range threats and obstacles. Just as they enter the factory proper, a long creature with a bulbous head and multiple arms spies on them from a nearby window. This creature, which seems to be the same one that chased Lo and Alone in the trailer, has a grotesque resemblance to a nightmarish version of Handsome Squidward. Though unsettling, it feels like a new threat that will relentlessly pursue the children. Inside the factory, they pass by portraits of the resident creatures. Two figures bear a striking resemblance to the guests from Little Nightmares 1, and they appear to have been repurposed as factory workers. Another portrait catches the eye, this one of a figure who looks like the factory's manager. She has the air of a strict headmistress with an authority presence that dominates the space. Her head shape is uncannily similar to the creature at the window, raising the possibility that they might be one and the same. There's been speculation that this creature could be the man in the purple suit from the Sounds of Nightmares podcast, perhaps collecting candy to lure children to his carnival. But from what I can see, this feels like a completely new character. One of the portraits appears to have been removed, perhaps signaling a worker who failed to meet the factory's twisted standards. Could this former employee be connected to the bed by the mirrors? And is this why cans of food were scattered in the room where Lo and Alone first arrived? Even so, it doesn't seem like the other workers were particularly productive. It's almost as if their sheer weight is what keeps the factory running. Lo and Alone are seen dragging heavy crates together as they navigate the complex machinery. Lo skillfully disables an electric trap from a distance with his bow, showing how crucial his abilities are in these parallel situations. The two also carry a fragile light bulb through the factory's twisted corridors, while bugs scatter around them, likely drawn to the rotting candy littered across the floor. As they cautiously trudge through the sticky candy, they climb a towering shelf and spot a gigantic claw in the distance, dropping piles of candy into the depths below. Beside Lo and Alone, there's a mysterious container marked with the familiar symbol of an eye, the same ominous eye we've seen in both the Maw and Pale City. Could this be a clue to Lollipop Boy's story? In the comics, we've seen him fight off the porcelain children by smashing their heads, but his attempt to escape was in vain. The teacher eventually found him cowering inside a locker, trapping him in his nightmare once more. In the Sounds of Nightmares podcast, Otto gave Noon and another boy candy, seemingly to provoke their nightmares, perhaps to open a path into the nowhere to find his sister Cece. What if it's the Lollipop itself that brought Lollipop Boy to this nightmarish place. After all, the Candleman lured Noon to the nowhere through the nightmare she suffered. We still don't know how exactly the other children like Six and Mono ended up here, but there's a common thread that binds every child in Little Nightmares, fear, the desperate fight for survival, and in the end, they are always left alone. The nowhere is a dangerous, sprawling world that can transform a child forever. In Little Nightmares 2, it felt like Six knew her chances of survival were better with someone by her side. As Mono, we 
experienced countless hardships, but we never saw things truly from Six's perspective. While she helped Mono, she was careful never to put herself in direct danger. Unlike the other protagonists in Little Nightmares, she's the only one who hasn't met a tragic end. It makes you wonder what was going through her mind when she held Mono, dangling over the abyss. When Mono first removed his bag, I saw it as a pivotal moment. The moment he stopped running and hiding, choosing instead to face the dangers head on in order to save his friend. But perhaps Six didn't recognize him without the bag, yet she could have recognized him as her captor instead, the thin man. Whether she believed dropping Mono would break the cycle or not, his fate was sealed. After being captured by the Thin Man, a piece of Six was taken away. Her glitchy remains, Shadow Six, revealed this. She was left with a void that could never be filled. In a desperate attempt to fill that emptiness, she began eating first bread, then rats, Six, why did you eat it? Ah! a gnome, and finally, the lady. <sighs> Her hunger, much like the guest, seemed to strip away parts of her humanity, turning her into something insatiable. I believe much of this transformation occurred during her time in the nowhere, but even as a child, there were things she clung to for comfort, just like a child clutching a teddy bear at night. Oh my god! Ah! The music box wasn't the only object that brought her solace, her raincoat did too. This ties into my theory that Six could be Otto's sister Cece. Cece had a fondness for raincoats and Six always wears one. Why? Because it brings her comfort, a small reminder of the person she once was. In my previous video, I introduced a theory about an entity beyond space and time controlling the broadcaster within the signal tower, premeditating every event, including Six's betrayal of Mon. One of you shared an intriguing theory suggesting that each eye in the spiral represents an entity within the nowhere, each tied to a specific realm. What if these entities played a role in bringing the children to the nowhere, each meant to fulfill a purpose dictated by these unseen forces? It's possible that from the very beginning, the children were destined to be preyed upon by certain creatures, all part of a larger plan. An entity from the necropolis, for example, may have created the monster baby to instill terror in the child visitors, including low and alone. I came across an interesting theory from a creator named Rant, where he explored some intriguing sketches that might hint at how to defeat this baby-like monstrosity. In the necropolis, body bags hang like dream catchers or pacifiers for the monster baby. This creature not only looks like a baby, but behaves like one too, childlike, yet terrifying. Among the sketches Rant examined was one showing a mirror with a beam of light. If the monster baby freezes its victims with its gaze, perhaps the key to defeating it lies in reflecting that beam back. This might explain why the dweller in the friendship trailer was seen holding a mirror. It could be a tool to fend off the monster baby's deadly stare. It figured out the key to defeating the monster baby but failed to execute it. Now on to the next theory. One of you asked me to look into Reanimal and how it resembles a little nightmares game. In Reanimal, a brother and sister traverse through a twisted version of hell to rescue their friends and escape the island they once called home. With Tarzier having worked on this project, it's no surprise that it shares a similar tone and atmosphere with Little Nightmares. But are they part of the same universe, or is Reanimal the Little Nightmares 3 we've been hoping for? No, they're two completely different games, each deserving respect for the creativity and hard work that went into them. Reanimal introduces us to five children wearing masks, humanoid creatures, a a pig, a kraken, a man riding a bike with an upside down face, a man in a top hat, and a mole-like creature with multiple faces. Elements that contribute to its own brand of horror. They're coming. That said, I'm excited for both games. The producers have confirmed that several people who worked on the previous Little Nightmares titles are also involved in Little Nightmares 3, which makes me even more intrigued about what's in store for us. Are you excited for Little Nightmares 3? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well as your theories. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, especially if you like Little Nightmares. And if you want to watch more of my videos until my next one, I linked my playlist to my gameplays for all the Little Nightmares games if you like 20 minutes of pterodactyl screams. Thank you for watching, and that's all.